Oh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name's Deborah Astles. I am the HR Director at Unipart, responsible for corporate responsibility and policy. And I'd also like to introduce Sally Calmer, my colleague who works at Oxford City Council, County Council sorry, uh, as a health improvement practitioner. It'll become apparent as we go through our presentation why we're both stood here in front of you. Weirdly, we didn't plan our outfits today, <laughs> but it just goes to show how this public-private partnership is going so well. Uh, okay, so, so the headline really for this, for this presentation is all to do with workplace well-being. And there is a body of evidence that says that most uh, UK employees don't believe that their employer cares about their well-being. Well, who cares about that anyway? So what? There's a bit of a carrot and a stick with workplace well-being. So we'll, we'll start with the stick. Poor health at work, and in general, is actually costing not just employers, but the UK economy, a vast amount of money. So that's losses in terms of <clears throat> the cost of people being away from the workplace when they're off sick, the cost of the sick pay, the cost of the work they should have been doing that they're not there doing. Uh, a huge proportion of that as well is attributable to mental ill health, which I think is an area that's very much in the public domain at the minute and an area that has been sadly very neglected, not just in the NHS, but also you know, by employers. And actually a term called presenteeism, so that's not people staying late to be seen at the office, but actually that the term describes people who are at work, and possibly they shouldn't be, uh, and they're at work, but they're not happy, they're not engaged, or they're not very well. Consequently, they're not being productive. Uh, and again, a huge cost of that to, to employers in the UK. And long-term illness as well is costing just the private sector alone, as you can see, well into, the, well into the billions. And this doesn't include the cost to the NHS and all the other kind of public costs associated with people having ill health. So there's another bit of a stick as well, which is actually we do have, as employers, a legal responsibility relating to the health and well-being of our employees. So the health and safety executive are very clear about our legal responsibilities as, as employers, and I think we're all very familiar with the need to separate you know, people and their body parts from machinery and sharp things and things that can crush them. I think we're less focused on the impact that our workplaces are having on the mental well-being of our employees and actually perhaps less aware of our legal responsibilities in that area. We have got a couple of lawyers on the front row, which I would happily explain that to you. Uh, but, but we do have a legal responsibility in this area. So within Unipart Group, uh, really over lots of years, we have done lots of things around employee health and safety. Uh, huge focus on the area of safety in terms of our safe systems of work, SOPs, all that kind of stuff, but also a lot of proactive work around promoting good health amongst our employees. We're a multi-site organisation. We've got about 20 sites across the UK and more overseas. And we've, and we've had lots of things going on at a very local level, locally driven, quite opportunistic, but nonetheless very positively received by our employees and actually had, you know, had a good impact on levels of employee engagement, which of course has a strong impact on productivity in the workplace. But we really felt that actually we weren't getting the, as much out of that as we could. We have an uh, employee engagement survey. It doesn't have very many questions, uh, 18 questions. One of the questions is, at work, I feel cared about as a person. And actually, that was one of our lowest scoring questions, which you know, is really disappointing because we do care about our employees, not just because we're nice, although we are nice, but actually, we care about our employees' well-being because if our employees are well and engaged and in the workplace, they will be more productive than if those things aren't in place. So towards the end of 2014, we developed a well-being strategy to formalise the great things we were already doing, but also build on that. So a lot of our activity was around physical health. Uh, so we've really, we really upped the ante in terms of our focus on the mental well-being of our employees, we introduced an employee assistance programme. We have a strategy which we call Unipart Work Well, which looks at all aspects of our employees' working lives around how we design their jobs, um, you know, their financial well-being, 
their emotional well-being, and also their physical well-being. And all of that's wrapped up in, in Unipark work. Well, and you can see here some of the publicity that we have around our sites, really trying to emphasise the point to our employees that actually we do care, uh, and really promoting uh, certainly the employee assistance programme, but also kind of timetable of events that take place across all of our sites on a very regular basis. It's only been going for a year, or just over a year, but actually already we're starting to see benefits. There's a lot of ad hoc anecdotal information coming back to me from uh, my colleagues around the business about how, how well uh, our employees are receiving this and the really positive feedback we get. And hundreds of our employees are actively doing things to try and improve their health through the various events that are run across all of our sites. We're also training our line managers on how to deal more effectively with uh, mental ill health and stress in the workplace, give them the confidence to have conversations with people and potentially avoid a lot of that kind of low-level disciplinary activity that takes place that's often associated with, with stress and poor emotional health. And in our employee engagement survey, that's, that's rating in terms of how people uh, report they feel cared about is starting to improve. And also we've seen a reduction in our absence levels and the, the, the cost I've associated with that is really at the moment just to do with you know, the cost of somebody not being there for a day, that's a, a day's lost work, but I suspect there's probably a bigger cost um, that's more difficult to assess in terms of you know, improved presenteeism. But actually what's become apparent is that we're not alone uh, in Oxfordshire in terms of our focus in this area. Uh, I, I was invited uh, through the good offices of grant here to join um, a network called the uh, Oxfordshire Health, it was weight reduction wasn't it? Yes. Which was chaired by Sally. So I joined that representing uh, industry but through that we've discovered actually a lot of synergy in terms of things that some organisations are trying to do around workplace well-being and what Sally has unlocked for me is just loads of stuff that I didn't know was there. Things that are free to access, resources, expertise, it's, it's really kind of enabled me to expand what we're doing at Unipart, but also there's, there's quite a few like-minded employers have collected ourselves together, and we're launching uh, what we're calling the Oxfordshire Workplace Wellbeing Network, the objective of which is really to share ideas and expertise with, a, with the ambition of improving levels of productivity around the county through our focus on workplace wellbeing. So without further ado, I'll hand over to Sally, who will tell you a little bit more about some of the things you can get if you want to join our network. Um, so as Deb's already mentioned, um, there's a, a sort of clear rationale about why we would be looking at workplace wellbeing. Um, so just to recap, um, Brits work on average 44.7 hours per week, which is the highest amount in Europe, and um, long working hours are associated with stress, poor lifestyle factors, such as smoking, um, alcohol, uh, poor diet, overweight and obesity, and um, poor health can also lead to uh, poor productivity. So um, from a public health perspective, which is where I sit in the County Council, we're interested in accessing um, this population where a lot of people spend a lot of their time. So workplaces seem like an obvious choice, and um, we actually commissioned Grant um, to uh, look into um, an appetite for a workplace wellbeing network uh, around Oxfordshire, and there was overwhelming support, um, but what businesses said is that they wanted it to be business-led rather than OCC-led. So this is where the links with Deb kind of came, came to fruition, really, and the work that she's been doing at Unipart. So, um, the aims of the network are to develop a network of business um, to improve productivity through sharing ideas and best practice. So already Unipart are doing some good work and um, our other partners, BMW, um, do some great work around workplace wellbeing as well. So we're combining our knowledge and resources and um, also looking into buying into the workplace wellbeing charter framework, um, which is available. Um, so we're going to be doing this mainly through... Um, in the beginning, because we're still in our infancy, uh, a LinkedIn virtual group. So um, through this we're going to have access to uh, local services, so that can include smoking cessation, weight management, um, national campaigns through Public Health England, for example, and physical activity opportunities, and then demonstrating um, 
uh, examples of best practice such as um, initiatives of walking meetings or lunchtime walks um, and uh, physical activity guidelines, the eat well plate. So there's a, a whole host of different health improvement um, uh, opportunities through this through this network. We can also offer support through experts um, and data and um, examples of well-being strategies for smaller businesses because it may be more difficult for them to to engage with this um, initiative. Um, we've all, we'll also be encouraging workplace well-being champions and um, identifying opportunities for training around that as well. Um, so what we'd like to do is invite as many of you as possible to um, have a look at our um, newly established LinkedIn group, um, which again is still in its infancy, but um, and any questions to email devs. Yeah, so it's the Oxfordshire Workplace Wellbeing Network. So if you go on LinkedIn and look that up, it's a closed group, yeah. so I'd have to approve you. Uh, but, you know, we'd love people to join. It's a great way to share ideas. We'll have access to information, expertise, events. There's no cost. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I look forward to hearing from you.